All right, so in the last video, we stated the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. We did the proof if you stuck around for that, All right? And so the main thing here is you define this function, right? One of these, these so-called, you know, these area so far functions, right? So the, this big F of X is measuring the area under the curve, starting at A, ending at X, right? Allowing for the fact that, you know, maybe, maybe F of X dips below the X axis, that's fine. We still know how to define definite integrals in that case as sort of a signed area, right? Um, so if we define big F in terms of this integral, it is a, it's an antiderivative for the function we started with, right? Big F prime gives us back little f, okay? So that means that if we have a function like this defined as an integral, and we want to calculate big F prime, we just say, well, by the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Here is, this is F of t, right? F prime, big F prime is little f at x. So all you're doing is replacing t by x, right? So f of x is x squared plus sine x. Okay, that's it. You're done. Okay? There's no more, there's no more to it than that. You stop at that point, right? Uh, now, probably the most likely place where, where you're going to go wrong in a problem like this is you're thinking derivatives. You're thinking derivatives, you're thinking derivatives, and you're thinking, oh, wait, wait, I know what the derivative of t squared is. I know what the derivative of sine is, right? It doesn't matter, right? You're not taking the derivative of what's inside, right? The way you take the derivative of these functions defined as integrals is just replacing t by x, right? t squared becomes x squared, sine t becomes sine x, and you have your answer, right? Okay, so now we know that big F is an antiderivative, right? We also know that we could do the indefinite integral, right? If we did the indefinite integral of x squared plus sine x dx, we know how this works. We get one third x cubed minus cos x plus possibly some constant, plus c, right? Um, so the difference between this and this is possibly in that constant of integration, right? We know that any two antiderivatives have to differ by a constant, right? So we know that. big F is given by this, right, for some C. And in fact, you can even figure out what C is if you're so inclined, uh, because big F at minus five has to be zero, right? Integral from minus five to minus five is zero. So it's equal to zero on the one hand. On the other hand, it's equal to what? Minus 125 over three minus cosine of minus five plus C. So that constant, if you solve for C, is gonna be 125 over 3 plus cosine of minus 5. And if you want, if you remember that cosine is an even function, cosine of minus 5 is the same thing as cosine of plus 5. Uh, so you could actually say exactly what, what f of x is in this case without the integral. f of x is going to be 1 third x cubed, right, minus cos x plus 125 over 3 plus cosine of 5, right? Now, normally that's not something that you bother to do, right? Uh, typically, if you have one of these functions that's defined as an integral, uh, 
you've arrived at that because you weren't able to come up with an antiderivative through other means. But when it is possible to do it both ways, it's nice to see that you can reconcile the results.